Yeah. Sometimes you just got to be just like, let's just get to it. You know what I mean? Like, let's just, let's not even fade it. Let's not be smooth. Let's just go. Right? You know? Uh, welcome to church this morning. How you doing? Yeah, you guys looking good today. That's what I got to say, right? Now, how many of you are fired up this morning because you're still fired up from last week, right? Anybody have a good time, right? Oh, uh, man, my, my dad, if you weren't here last week, my dad came and hung out with us. Whew. Uh, if, uh, if you haven't had a chance, you might want to follow up online on that, okay? Uh, if, if you ever wanted to know what is mornings like, 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 like with just like a shot of extreme adrenaline, coffee, like everything all at once, just watch online. You'll know. You'll, you'll get it, right? But hey, I want to welcome you to church today. Uh, if you're new, you're hanging out for the first time, a friend invited you to church, man, we're honored to have you. We think it's awesome that you chose to hang out with us, and we want you to just make yourself at home and relax. We think you found a great place to worship God. Uh, we're excited that you're on this journey with us. If you don't know anything about our church, just know we value transparency, honesty. We love being real. We want to make sure that, that we are completely transparent parent before an all-powerful God, because when we are, we actually learn, we actually grow, we actually become different when we allow God to work in our lives. And, and I do want to give you a heads up that there are some people here in this church that they are extremely fired up about what God is doing in their lives. I, so I feel like sometimes we got to make a disclaimer, right? You know, that sometimes in church, you're going to hear people say, amen, hallelujah, praise God, stuff like that. For us at City Line, that's perfectly normal, okay? That's okay. It's okay to do that, right? It's an excitement about what God is doing in your life. It's an agreement with what God is impressing on your heart. And so we just want to make you aware if that's new to you, don't be alarmed. There's nothing strange about it at all. Today, we're going to jump into a discussion that we've been in over the last few weeks uh, about the Holy Spirit. It's a series all about the Holy Spirit, and this series has been important to us because we said as Christ followers or, or people in general, we kind of know a little bit about God our Father. We, we talk about God being our Father. We got an idea of what our Father means. Uh, we have a, a, our Father relationship our, with our earthly Father, whether it was good or whether it was bad. We get a genuine understanding of that. We also know a little bit about Jesus. We know about God the Father and then God the Son, this Jesus. We see pictures of Jesus. We read about Jesus. We understand Jesus. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, it's kind of like the holy what? We keep hearing that word. We keep hearing spirit. And to us, it sounds strange. It's spirit. It's ghost. It's whatever. You know, and, and we don't know what to make of that. So what we said is that we wanted to spend a few weeks just trying to get a biblical understanding of what the Holy Spirit is is what the Holy Spirit does. And here's the key word, who he is, the person of the Holy Spirit, the person of God, God being three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and we read and understand more about the Holy Spirit as we engage scripture. That's important because the Holy Spirit, it perhaps is probably the most misunderstood, misapplied, and many times just ignored. Because when you don't know about something or when you're concerned about something, chances are you criticize it or just push it completely away. We don't wanna push the Holy Spirit away because when we push the Holy Spirit away, it's like us saying no to God. In fact, it is saying no to God if we understand that it's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we took you through that in, in, in week one, and we said it's important to understand that the Christian life, without the Holy Spirit, there is no Christian life. There is no peace. There is no joy. There is no freedom. Church becomes a, a strict religious institution based on rules that you have to follow, and that's not what God intended for his church. God wants to give us freedom, freedom. We want to experience freedom. That's what we desire is freedom. Like we said, we want to know who the Holy Spirit is, what he does. What does that mean in my life? And then last week we said Bishop Jack Sheets came in and he talked about the power of the Holy Spirit, right? He said, ah, you know, he got all, you know, I mean like red, you know what I mean? Just like, you guys thought I was red, you know what I mean? He thought, he thought I had energy, right? Uh, apparently the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, right? But he talked about the power of the Holy Spirit and the significance of this power, right? That, that in Acts chapter 1, right, we see that, that we get this power. Acts chapter 2, you see what happens when the power of the Holy Spirit consumes this church and they go about being about everything that God intended them to be. So Jesus says when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you're going to receive power. This week, I want to do something a little different. I want to talk more about the Holy Spirit, but maybe in a way that you've kind of heard, maybe know a little bit about, but maybe still kind of misunderstand. Today, I actually want to want to talk about the holy how the holy spirit enables us and empowers us with spiritual gifts 
That's something you have to understand and know about what the Holy Spirit does in the life of someone who is following Jesus. He is the giver of gifts. Has anybody ever received a gift? Right? You know how it is. You love to receive a gift. I remember one Christmas, my father-in-law came to my wife and I and said, I'm going to give you guys a gift. And I got excited because who doesn't get excited about gifts, right? He says, actually, I'm going to give you a helper to help you clean your house. I was, in my mind, I'm thinking like, sweet, you know, I'm like, we're about to go to next level. You know what I mean? Like we have, we have, we're going to have help cleaning this place. I mean, there's five of us in here. Like we can use all the help we could get. Right. And then my wife, she was the opposite. She was thinking like, no, like that's not going to happen. Like nobody's just going to roll up in here and help me <laughs> clean the house. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's just not going to work. Right. So it was opposite ends. Right? It was this gift that was trying to be given to us. We were receiving it in different ways. Well, Christmas came. The gift was given, right? We opened up this gift. It came in a box. I was like, that's odd that a helper would come in a box, you know? But we opened up this box, and it was one of those little round, like, uh, sweepers that just kind of go through the house. You're just supposed to turn it on and kind of let it go and do its thing. It's going to bump into stuff and back up and go somewhere else. And, and somehow in the process, it's supposed to clean your house. I looked at it and I was like, man, <laughs> we need a lot more help than this. You know, like, that's the thing. And Linda, she looks at it and she just kind, kind of laughs, right? But understand this. It was a gift given to us by our father that was intended to be helpful. But do you know what we did with the gift? <laughs> the gift is somewhere packed away in the garage, still in the box, never used. You're like, why am I talking about that? Why are you talking about this kind of gift? Here's the reality, okay? Many of us, we treat the gifts that God gives us in the same exact way. That God, our Father, has given us gifts, spiritual gifts for us to use, intended to be helpful. But what we've done is we've left them unused, uh, uncovered, and stuck away somewhere and never allowing God to actually fully use us to our full capacity, we're missing out on so much that God wants for us. Here's what you have to understand about God. If you don't know anything about God, God is the giver of gifts. He's not just the giver of good gifts. Scriptures teach us that he is the giver of every good and perfect gift. So in other words, if God has given you a gift, he doesn't screw that up, right? If God is giving you a gift, he's not going to give you junk. How many of you also received that gift that your first thought was like, I'm regifting this, right? Like... <laughs> Like, that's not the gift that I was hoping for. I'm, I'm giving this to somebody else. Sometimes the gift that God gives us, because we don't fully understand it, it maybe isn't what we thought it was going to be. Sometimes we think, well, there's nothing I can do with that gift, God. Believe me, if God gives you a gift, you can do something with it. God gives you good gifts. Understand the kind of gifts that God gives you. Perhaps I want to suggest that God actually has given you the greatest gift ever by anyone throughout your entire life. And you know what that gift is? It's the gift of eternal life. The gift of eternal life. If you're taking notes, write this down because it's not there. Romans chapter 6. I want to help you with some tools to be able to read up more on this. Romans chapter 6 says that the wages of sin is death. But get this, the gift of God is eternal life. Amen, somebody, right? The gift of God is eternal life. That's important for us to understand, meaning that because of sin in our life, that somebody had to pay for that sin. There's a penalty for that sin, that the wage of that sin that should be paid is death, that you should have paid that price. But Jesus in his love for you, Jesus in his grace for you, he paid the penalty of sin and death for you. Why? To give you the gift of eternal life, the gift of a relationship with him. That's something beautiful that we should understand that God has given to us. Not only that, but we understand from this series, what we've been talking about is that God gives us the gift of what? The Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Write this down, Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1 found in verses 4 and 5. Jesus says, don't leave Jerusalem. Wait for what? Right? The disciples are like, well, wait, wait. These guys want to kill us. What are you, you're leaving. What are we going to wait for? He says, wait for the gift that my father has promised. And then he goes on and he explains it. He says, John, he baptized with water. But guess what's about to happen to you? You are going to be baptized with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Right? You guys are following along this morning. I like to say 30. Right? We're on this. Right? We're going to... We're in learning mode. I don't know if you know this or not, but we're, we're in learning mode, right? Like we, we want to consume this. We want to learn more about what God has for us so that we can be all that God has intended us to be, 
right? We're doing this for a reason, right? We want, how many of you know that if God's given you power, don't you want to exert that power? Don't you want to use that power? All right, then, okay, so we're on the right track. I'm just making sure that we're there, okay? God also gives us this. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, a gift that God gives us is that he gives us spiritual gifts. The Apostle Paul talks a lot about this. Paul, one of those guys that was a leader in the early church. If you don't know this, sometimes you miss this because you read your Bible and it starts with Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, right? The Gospels, according to we're reading about Jesus' life. But did you know that Paul's letters, right? The letters that are attributed to Paul, he actually wrote those before the Gospels were ever written. So Paul was the first to actually start to document these things about, about Jesus and about what was going on and who Jesus was. And as he begins to document these things, he begins to talk about the work of the Holy Spirit in people's lives. One of those letters was to the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians 12. He says, now, now, just to answer some questions that are going on that are swirling around, now about the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, here's the deal. I don't want you to be uninformed. I don't want you to walk around in a fog. I don't want you to walk around misunderstanding. This is a big deal. The gifts of the Spirit, the gifts that the Holy Spirit has given to you is something important for you to understand with its entirety. Unfortunately, though, when you look around in our churches, and it would probably be true of City Line Church, and this is not a knock on us, it is that the majority of Christ's followers have no clue what their spiritual gifts are. Uh, it's, some studies would even go as high as to say that over 80% of those who are following Jesus do not know and understand what their spiritual gifts are, have even talked about spiritual gifts, or even know where to start when it comes to spiritual gifts. I want to let you know that we are a church that believes in spiritual gifts, right? We believe that the gifts still apply to us today, and we want to know the fullness, to have a clear understanding of what those gifts are so that they can be applied in our lives. So he says, Paul tells us, I don't want you to be, to be uninformed about this. I, th think about this. Think about your body, your physical body in relation to the, the body of Christ. If 80% of your body was not functioning to full capacity, what would life be like? When you look at the church, the body of Christ, just thinking about it, if eight, over 80% of us might not fully understand spiritual gifts, know what our spiritual giftings are, are we functioning at our full capacity as a church? Can you imagine if we were? What kind of things would we see? What kind of, what kind of miracles would we attribute to God? What, what kind of things would happen in our culture and society? What would life look like then if we were functioning at our full capacity? See, our gifts and abilities that God has given to us, they're given to us so that together, his church, his body can advance his mission in the world, not our agenda, not what we want. It's to advance his mission in the world around us. So Paul goes on and he talks about these in depth. He says, there are different kinds of gifts. Let's understand that. Not everybody has the same kind of gift. Not everybody's supposed to have the same kind of gift. There's different kinds of spiritual gifts, but get this, it's the same spirit the, is that is the source of them all. The same spirit that's the source of them all. That's 1 Corinthians 12, 4. He goes on in verse 5. There are different kinds of service, but understand this. No matter what your service, your gift is, we serve the same Lord. This is where we come in at City Line and say, yeah, yeah, this is what we unite around, right? It's Jesus first, Jesus at the center. The things that society, world, culture, whatever our, our views about politics and all this other junk in our world, right? That should say, that should divide us, right? They'll never be greater than the one thing that unites us. That's Jesus Christ. We serve the same Lord, uniquely gifted as he's gifted us. We serve him. Paul makes that incredibly clear. He goes on in verse six. He says, God works in different ways. Remember we said that in, in, in very, the very first week? Sometimes we want God to do the same thing over and over and over and over again. And that just kind of borderlines this like emotional experience. The Holy Spirit is not emotionalism, right? The Holy Spirit does want to, you to experience him. He should be experienced, but it's not about just this emotional high. God works in different ways, right? He works in different ways, but it's the same God who does the work in who? All of us. Take special note that it says all of us, not some of us. That's important for you to understand this morning. It says all of us, not some of us. Notice that. God never created someone and then steps back and looks at them and says, mm, I wonder what I'm going to do with that one. <laughs> never once would God do that. 
God creates people with purpose. He creates people with intention. In fact, scriptures tell us that we are uniquely gifted, that not only are we uniquely gifted, that we are masterpieces. We are God's work of art. God doesn't make mess. He doesn't make junk. <laughs> He's the giver of every good and perfect gift. But what you also need to recognize is these gifts that God has given you, there's an enemy that wants to do everything in his power with every trick and distraction to get you to try to keep your gift hidden and unused, locked away somewhere, tucked under something, pushed away and forgotten about so that the gift that your father, the gift that your, your good and loving heavenly father has given you is somehow now not useful to build up the body of Christ and to minister to the people of this world. I mean, these are foundational key pieces. This is foundational to who we are as City Line Church. We want to be who God's created us to be. We want to function in these skills and abilities that go above and beyond just natural things to what God has given uniquely to us. So to understand spiritual gifts, we have to first start by understanding what they are not so we can get a better understanding of what they actually are and then actually how that applies to our life. Are you with me today? Right? We're in learning mode. Here we go. Right? Spiritual gifts, if you're taking notes, they are not natural skills and abilities. Okay, this is not like, hey, I'm just naturally good with numbers, you know, or hey, some of our worship team, they're just naturally good at singing. I don't think they ever took a lesson. They just came out of the belly singing one day. You know what I mean? Like they've grown up since five years old, just singing. That is a, a skill that is given to you by God. It's an ability that God has blessed you with, but those are different than your spiritual gifts. Now, mind you, spiritual gifts, they might highlight some of the unique, authentic, natural skills and abilities that you have and coincide with those, but you need to understand that your spiritual gifts are different than your natural skills and abilities. There's a clear distinction that we're going to find in Scripture. Paul's going to point those things out to us to help us have a better understanding. Yes, you have your natural skills and abilities, but you also have spiritual gifts. Another thing that spiritual gifts are not I love this. They're not only for a select few. You have to understand this because this gets really weird in church sometimes, right? This gets really kind of sketchy in church sometimes. Spiritual gifts are given, as we said, to all Christ followers. Here's the cool thing. Regardless of how you even view yourself, how many of you know you're your own worst critic? I can't do this, and I don't do that, and I look at them, and they do this well, and I can't even do that well. And we, go, we do all this stuff, right, Like where we like just beat ourselves up over and over again. Did you know that regardless of how you view you, regardless of your, your own emotional state, regardless of, of your self-esteem, regardless of all that stuff, God still says, I've created you, I've gifted you, you are still a work of art and a masterpiece. I'm just trying to get you to be alerted to it, to step into it, to begin to live in it. Every gift and skill and ability can be used for the kingdom of God, right? Every spiritual gift, get this, is supposed to be used in the kingdom of God. Do you hear that? Every skill and ability can be used in the the kingdom of God. It's easily transferable. Your day job, the stuff that God pays you to do (laughs) for someone else, right? Those skills and abilities that he's given you are immediately applied to the kingdom of God, right? Right? They can be, but your spiritual gifts that he's uniquely gifted to you, those are supposed to be used in the kingdom of God for the building up of his church, for the building up and continuation of his mission. So they're not only for a select few. And I need to say this too. Spiritual gifts are not reserved just for the mature Christian. It's not just for those that hold certain roles or those that have certain positions. It's not for those that are the quote unquote professionals. Your pastors at City Line Church aren't the only ones that hold spiritual gifts. <laughs> you know who holds a spiritual gift? <laughs> the person that's serving over here right now holding babies so that some parents can come in and get filled with the Holy Spirit, right? The ones that are over here just rocking some babies. Babies are screaming and crying and fussy and they don't care. I'll take them for an hour and 15 minutes. Why? So you can get filled with God, right? That's a spiritual gift. Believe me, you do not want Pastor Jack over there with the babies, <laughs> Yes, I've had three of my own, but thank God for a spiritually gifted wife who was, I mean, you just don't want it. I mean, me, I'm like, hey, I want to teach you something, right? You know, I want you to sit down. I want you to be quiet. Kids don't understand that. You know what I mean? Next thing you know, parents show up. I got them all duct taped to the chairs and stuff. Like, you know, trying to, you know, like, you know, and then you got other people that they're just calm and caring and they they have a gift, 
Right? It's a spiritual gift. It's not just for a select few. Everybody has been given these gifts. If you have a certain gift, it doesn't mean that you're more mature of a Christian than someone else who has a different gift than you. Sometimes, if we're not careful, certain gifts in the church will become elevated gifts. There is no elevated gifts throughout Scripture. Think about this. One of those things is people will say, hey, you know what? If you have this certain kind of gift, then you're at this kind of level of Christianity. And you should, if you're over here at this level of Christianity, you should seek and strive to get up to that level. And you try so hard and try so hard only to be left thinking that you're somehow a less than Christian. There is no less than Christian. God sees us through the same lens. He sees us as dearly and completely loved. He's one that he gave his life for you out of his love for you. He's uniquely gifted, each and every one of you. So they're not just for a select few. The other thing you have to understand is the, the, the spiritual gifts are not the fruit of the Spirit. There's a difference between the fruit of the Spirit and spiritual gifts. If you want to learn about the fruit of the Spirit, you go to Galatians chapter 5. It's right there. I put it in your notes. Galatians chapter 5, right? 22 and 23. Here's what Paul says. But the fruit of the Spirit, okay, he's given a clear distinction, and this is going to be important for you to understand. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, right? Somebody say patience. patience. Okay, that's forbearance, okay? Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against things, there is no such law. Jack, why would you bring this up, this difference? Because sometimes people will say, you know what? I just don't think I can love that person. You know, uh, sometimes they, they've done things to me and I just, I just don't know if I can love. They've upset me so much. Or you know what? I just don't think that I have the gift of patience. <laughs> I need you to learn something today. Patience is not a gift. Patience is the work of the Holy Spirit in your life, changing who you are from the inside out. In other words, if the Holy Spirit is in your life, if you are pursuing, we say we're about pursuing Jesus at City Line Church, you're pursuing a deeper, closer relationship with him. The reality is the Holy Spirit is working in you, transforming you, creating some clear distinctions about you, some evidence that you are a different person. What is the evidence of the work of the Holy Spirit or the the root of the Holy Spirit's work inside of you. It's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If you arrive at a point where you say, I just don't have patience, I just don't know that I can love, my joy is absent, you know what that means? I need more of the Holy Spirit. I need more of the Holy Spirit active and at work in my life. So instead of just throwing my hands up and quitting and saying, you know what? I just don't have patience, you know? No, I get down on my knees and I say, Lord, here I am. Would you fill me up with your Holy Spirit so that I can have some patience? Amen. You following me? You with me this morning? I did this too much. You know what I'm saying? Don't try to say it's too much after you got all fired up with my dad last week. <laughs> See, I knew I, knew I was going to get you. Everybody walks out all smiling, high-fiving and stuff. I feel ready for the week. You know what I mean? Like, this is, this is good stuff. This is stuff that you need. This is stuff that sometimes, unfortunately, is not talked about in church. It needs to be talked about in church so that we can fully function as the body of Christ. That's something to be excited about. Clear signs that we need more of the Holy Spirit in our life is when we assess that these things are absent in our life. Here's the other thing. Gifts of the Spirit is not something to be afraid of. It's not something to be afraid of. <laughs> Remember we said in week one, like there's nothing weird about the Holy Spirit. You know what gets weird sometimes? And I don't mean this in a mean way. People. <laughs> people are weird. And unfortunately, and maybe even admittedly, right? Some people who believe in the gifts of the Spirit, they're just strange. <laughs> I don't know why. Some of you who hear the gifts of the Spirit, you think like, well, I got to wear my hair like that. <laughs> you know, I got... I, <laughs> Should I wear a lot of makeup or no makeup? You know what I mean? Like, should I, what, what should I do? You know, you're trying to figure out all this stuff. Like, what does this mean for me in the, whole, in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, right? Or the gifts of the Spirit? None of that stuff is weird. People can be weird, though, sometimes. There's nothing weird about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. If God wants to give you a good gift, then why wouldn't you want to receive that gift and use that gift to its full potential? I get it. There's one gift that everybody gets a little weirded out about. Nobody, nobody's, you know, the, the, the gift of administration, you know, like, I'll take that, you know, or, you know, the gift of, you know, whatever it is, mercy. Yeah, praise God, I'll, I'll take more mercy. My, but, you know, you know, you read in Scripture, there's also this gift of tongues thing, and everybody's like, whoa, hold up, pump the brakes. You know what I mean? Like, 
Uh, don't, be, don't be trying to gift me with that, God. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Here's the deal. Sometimes we just misunderstand it and don't know a lot about it. And so because we misunderstand it, we just want to push it away. I know that it can be strange, but that does not mean that the spiritual gifts are strange. It doesn't mean that there's anything strange about what the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life. So don't be afraid of these things. In fact, let's take a closer look at spiritual gifts in our life. I'm going to give you a working definition, okay, a working definition of a spiritual gift so you can hopefully see the difference than your natural skills and abilities and talents. It goes a little something like this. A spiritual gift, okay, is a divine or supernatural ability given to all Christ followers to do God's work on earth. Get this. First in the church and then overflowing into the world. Sometimes we get fired up about our gifts, and we're like, let's go tackle America, right? And it's like, uh, God's like, why don't you practice first within context of your church? Why don't you grow and cultivate and develop what I'm doing inside of you within the context of the community of believers in which I've called you to, Right? Spiritual gift is this, it's, it's, it's next level. It's this divine or supernatural. I know sometimes people are like, wow, super, I got supernatural power. No, no, don't get it. Don't make it weird, right? This is something that God is doing inside of you. It's an ability that he's uniquely gifted to you. It's given to all Christ followers to do his work on earth, first in the church and then overflowing into our world. Paul says it like this in Romans 12, 6. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. All of us in this room, we all have different gifts according to the grace given to us. Now, what's interesting, I got to break this down because this is funny. This is going to be funny to you. I I've given you some Greek words, right? I chose this one to leave off your list because some people get weirded out by it. You know, sometimes, just like I told you in week one, people are saying like, hey, are we becoming like this spirit-filled church? And I was like, I sure hope so, right? Because that's what God intends for his church, that we be filled with his spirit. And there's nothing weird about that. Another time, people will ask, you know, like, hey, you know, uh, I remember growing up, they're like, hey, I want to invite you to my church, you know, stuff like that, you know? And, and so we invite people to church, but then I I'd go home and I'd pray, like when I invite my friends to church, like, God, please don't do weird things in church today. <laughs> because I grew up in a Pentecostal environment, right? Where people would run around the room and like different things like that and stuff that I didn't even understand and stuff like that. And I was just like, whew, I don't even know what's going on. But Jesus, I did what you wanted me to do. I invited a friend. He said, yes, he's going to come. Don't freak him out. You know what I mean? Like, just <laughs> God, just God, would you behave yourself today? You know, like, like, please. Right, because that, that was just kind of the, the environment that I grew up in, right? A another, another word that was used for that environment, I told you in week one, is this word charismatic. Uh, uh, oh, 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 come to my church. Oh, don't worry. But we're not like weird charismatic like churches like that, you know? Because charismatic carries the stereotype. Unfortunately, the, the word's mis been misunderstood and been misused, right? Because did you know that the word charis, charis shows up right here? That's what that means? Charis, gift. Okay, charisma, charisma, the Greek word charisma, you know what that's translated as? A grace gift, a grace gift. It's what Paul is talking about, that we have been given different gifts according to the grace of God given to us. Charisma, you've been gifted by grace. He didn't have to give it to you, but he chose to give it to you. You're uniquely gifted because he loves you. Right? And so are we becoming this charismatic church? Are we a charismatic church? Okay, you guys ready for this? Yes. <laughs> and it's not, whew, it's not weird. It's not strange. Why are we a charismatic church? Because we believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We believe that he has uniquely gifted us, and we actually want to function in those gifts. We want to live out those gifts. It's charisma. It's, it's, it's choosing to come alongside God and his work that he's doing in the world by his grace. We are invited. We are gifted, uniquely equipped to help build up, get this, the body of Christ. And this is how it works, Paul says, 1 Corinthians 12, 8. To one person, the spirit gives the ability to give wise advice, right? That's different than a natural skill and ability, right? He gives wise advice. To another, the same spirit gives the message of special knowledge. He goes on, he says, the same spirit gives great faith to another. And then to someone else, the spirit gives the gift of healing. Wow, that's intense, right? Like people, I mean, just, have you ever been around somebody that just has like extreme faith? Like you even go to them and, hey, could you pray for me? Because your faith is way bigger than mine right? Or like sometimes like you've heard of people that said, hey, I prayed for someone and God like, like did a, an amazing work in their life and healed them. You're like, oh, next time I'm feeling sick, you're praying for me, right? 
Like maybe, maybe in that faith, maybe there's that gift for that, but it's God doing this, right? It's God functioning in this. We're just coming alongside what God is doing. He goes on to say in verse 10, he gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the spirit of God or from another spirit. Discernment. Discernment is a gift from God. To be able to discern, like, hey, is this good? Is this not good? Is this something that's right, not right? What, what does that look like? You have to understand. With it. He gives us this ability to discern these things for a reason and a purpose. He goes on, still another person is given the ability to speak, here it is, in unknown languages, right? I don't know why he chooses to do that, but he does, to continue his work forward in the world around us, while another is given the ability to interpret what's being said. So here's that one I want to tell you. Tongues and interpretation. The questions you might ask, are they gifts for today? <laughs> Tongues and interpretation, are they real spiritual gifts? Tongues and interpretation, does that mean that that's what it is to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Those are all great questions, and I want to invite you to come to the Q&A, <laughs> right? Because we're going to talk about those things. We're going to kind of like help you understand that I can't do it all on the weekend, right? So sometimes we said our growth and our learning has to happen beyond the weekend, right? And so we have to choose to put ourselves in environments where we can continue to grow and get these questions answered so that we can live into the fullness of what God has for our life. So I want to encourage you to be a part of that, to make sure you're there coming to be a part of that. Paul wraps it up. He says, it is, this is important. It is the one and only spirit. Ruach, remember from week one? Paraclete, right? It's the one and only spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. So some of you are like, but how come that you got that and I got, and I got this? Like, what am I gonna do with this, God? Hey, God's given you a gift, use it. You know what I mean? Don't worry about what they have and what you have and what you don't have. God is the one who distributes those gifts to you and he's given you those gifts on purpose with a purpose. Use those gifts to the best of your ability. If we're not careful, what happens is our own personal inadequacy will try to convince us that maybe we're not gifted, even though the scriptures explicitly state that we absolutely are. See, why, why, why would the Holy Spirit give us these gifts? I hope you're asking those kinds of questions. It's because you have purpose. You have a purpose in God's plans for this world. Like, like you are his plan for the world around us so that others will come to know him. That happens through you. In fact, 1 Corinthians 12, 7 says, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so that we can help, what? Each other. Not help ourselves, not to edify ourselves, not to build up ourselves, not to make ourselves feel better, but the gifts of the Spirit, understand this, they never ever call attention to themselves, they always point to Jesus. The gifts of the Spirit never highlight themselves. They always point to Jesus. Your gifts are not about you and what you can do. It's about your partnership with God and being a blessing to others. Others. God has gifted you to bless others. As a follower of Jesus, serving others is an integral part of our identity of who we are as Christ followers. Serving others is about spiritual growth. Using your gifts, your spiritual gifts to serve in this church is about spiritual growth which should call into question. I'm not trying to make you feel bad that you came to church today. If I'm not serving somewhere, if I'm not involved somewhere, am I growing spiritually in that area of my life? Am I utilizing the gifts that God has uniquely gifted to me if I'm not involved somewhere? You have to think about that. You have to ask yourself the question because sometimes we get so frustrated in our relationship with God. God, how come we're not growing like we're supposed to? God, how come this isn't happening like it's supposed to? right? When God's given us the tools, the abilities, the gifts to actually be all that he's given us to be, we're just not using it. We're leaving it in a box. We're leaving it unused. We're talking ourselves out of it. We're letting our lack of self-confidence get the best of us. We're allowing the enemy to lie right to our face that somehow we're not good enough, that somehow God doesn't want to use us. When God clearly says, I want to use you, not just to be a blessing to you, because believe me, when you're functioning in your gifts, there's no better feeling. <laughs> when you're functioning in those, those, those gifts that God's, there's no better feeling. But you know what? You are blessed to be a blessing to others. 
blessed to be a blessing to others. So how do I respond to the gifts of the Spirit? We said, how do we respond? What does this mean for us? Like, how do I respond to this? I mean, this is a big, important question. I'm learning about the gifts of the Spirit. I understand I'm uniquely gifted. I understand he's given gifts to all of us. Understand this, those gifts that Paul talks about, the ones that I just read today, there's a lot more of them that are talked about in Scripture. So here's the first thing I want to give you a clear understanding of when you're understanding the gifts of the Spirit, or how do you apply this to your life? Here's how you respond. You begin to investigate the gifts that God has for me. You investigate the gifts that God has for you. Well, how do I investigate the gifts that God has for me? You get out your Bible, right? Dust it off, you know, and you open up, okay? I want to write some of these down. Some of them are already in your notes. It's, it's Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, Ephesians 4, 1 Peter 4, Hey, I only got so much time in here. <laughs> Some of y'all are going to have to catch up online. Right? I told you I can't do it all on the weekend, right? You know, it's like, I'll say it one more time though, okay? <laughs> Romans 12. Some of them, like I said, are already in your notes. So you just got to follow up on that full chapter, right? 1 Corinthians 12 is already in your notes. So you just want to follow up on that full chapter, okay? Ephesians 4 talks about the five-fold gifts, right? It's interesting. You should read on that, okay? And then also 1 Peter chapter 4. You begin to read about the gifts of the Spirit. Read about the kind of work that God has uniquely gifted you to do, right? The kind of ability that God has blessed you with, all right? But then you don't, you don't just stop there by reading it. Here's the next step. You, you begin to pray, Pray. Prayer is important. Remember, we had a whole series on prayer. Prayer. Father, Father, would you please show me how you've gifted me? God, what gifts have you uniquely given to me? Do you think God doesn't want to reveal that to you? Do you think God is playing some mean trick that is like, oh, oh, just a little closer. (laughs) You almost had it. No, that's not who God is. God wants to reveal your gift to him, but he also wants you to seek the giver of the gift. Not just the gift, he wants you to seek the giver of the gift. This is all about discovery, okay? It's all about discovery. People around you, people in this church, people in our world need you to discover your gifts. Why? Because you're a part of the body of Christ, Romans 12, 4 uh, through 6. Just as our bodies have many parts, each part has a special function. So it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body, and we all belong to each other. Our gifts function and belong to each other. Not everyone has the same gift, but all are a part of the body. Not all can be an eye, not all can be an arm, but you are a part of the body, and you are important to the body of Christ. Saying, I, I don't know, I don't know, I, I don't know the, 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 any of these gifts. If I have any of these gifts that when I start reading, these, listen, don't buy into the lie, right? Again, the, the gifts that Paul mentions in this is not a comprehensive list. <laughs> There's more gifts that God wants to give that just aren't documented clearly in Scripture. But God will reveal that to you as you begin to seek him. So start by examining the things that you do well. The things that fire you up. One of my favorite questions that I like to ask people is like, hey, what makes you passionate? Like, what, what are you most passionate about? Because if you're actually passionate about something, like, people, they, they have no problem talking about it, right? Maybe you start with the things that get you most fired up, that get you most passionate. That, you know what? Like, man, if I could just spend the majority of my time doing that, that's what I'd do. Right? Whatever that is, choose to start there. Investigate those gifts. And if you don't know what your spiritual gifts are currently, you know what? Then just start trying out the ones you think you have. <laughs> Amen, somebody? Amen. Right? Even if you don't know for sure or certainty, I think I might have the gift of, you know, whatever. You know, like you just, there's a bunch of them, right? I'm going to tell you how to get more of that in a minute, right? It's called a spiritual gifts assessment right? You can also investigate your spiritual gifts through a spiritual gifts assessment. You can check that out online. There's a bunch of them online, but here's what I want to caution you, okay? Spiritual gift assessments, you can take that test and your spiritual gifts will change depending on your mood and what's going on in your life from time to time. Likewise, you can take a spiritual gifts assessment and your top three gifts will come out and suddenly you'll be like, sweet, I knew it. I have the gift of teaching. And so you'll go to somebody and say, provide me an opportunity to teach, because I have the gift of teaching, right? 
Just because the spiritual gift assessment says that you have the gift of teaching doesn't necessarily mean you have the gift of teaching. Here's how you discover if you actually have that gift. If what you find on paper actually affirms some of the things you're already doing. If you have the gift of teaching, chances are you're already teaching somewhere. <laughs> you're already teaching someone somewhere. You just now realize with affirmation and clarity like, oh, aha, I kind of have been doing that. If you have the gift of wise counsel, right, of counsel or a gift of administration, you're like, no wonder I loved everything in its perfect place and all lined up and all this stuff. It's like, it's, you know, people just thought I was anal. You know what I mean? Like they just thought that like I just, you know, was like way overboard on everything. People just thought that I was, you know, we use all these words to describe that, right? Did you know that those are, th those are like destructive words because that's actually a gift that that person has? And just because your life is a little more chaotic because you don't have that gift, you need that person that has that gift. Amen, somebody? Right? Somebody that has a gift of organization, praise Jesus for that gift, right? Because those who are disorganized much of their life, we need you in our lives, right? Because why? We all belong to each other. We move forward as a church when we support and love one another. Investigate those gifts, spiritual gift assessment. You can check that out online. Embrace the gifts that God has given you. Embrace the gifts that God has given you. Okay, that's the next step. Just embrace those gifts that he has given me. Choose to embrace them. Don't question, God, why'd you give me this one and not that one? Don't look at somebody else's and say, you know what? They have a better gift than I do. In fact, even if you discover that you have the same gift as someone else does, don't compare yourself based on their functioning of the gift and your functioning of the gift. We have a teaching team here that I all believe I feel or I've been blessed with the gift of teaching. But did you know if we sat around and compared ourselves to how each other teaches, we would never get anywhere. We would just remain in our own pity party, always thinking that somebody else teaches better than I do. You know, my dad comes in here and wrecks shop. And then I'm like, how am I supposed to follow that up? You know what I mean? Like that's, I, sh I knew I shouldn't have had him come. You know what I mean? Like, you know what that is? That's me and my own insecurities, right? That, that's me trying to wrestle through. I just need to function how God's created me. It's okay that he's that way. You know what I mean? It's okay that she's that way. It's okay that God has created them unique in that way. It's all the same gift manifested in different ways. Why? Because we're all going to reach somebody in a different way. And we're all needed. Why? Because we're a part of his body. So embrace those gifts that God has given to you. 2 Timothy 1, 6 says, this is why I remind you to fan into flames the gift of the Spirit, the spiritual gift that God has given to you. I'm asking the band to come back up because I know we're going to spend time to worship here as I give you these last two, two, two things to think about. But this is why I remind you to fan the gift, to stir it up. What does that mean? To continue to develop it, to continue to seek it. Don't let it lay dormant. Don't let it just go by the wayside. Don't let it just, just stay un, unboxed and, and hidden somewhere, but continue to stir it up. And when you continue to stir it up and develop it, here's the next thing. You utilize the gift that God has given to you. You investigate it, learn more about it, okay? You embrace it once you're learning more about it. And then what's the next thing you do? You use it. You use it. You put it into Practice, understand this. Practice makes all the difference. Peter talks about this. God has given each of you a gift, understand this, from his great variety of spiritual gifts. He follows up, Peter says, use them well to do what? To serve one another. We have a responsibility before God to lean into the gifts. In other words, this is not an optional thing. This is not, should I or shouldn't I function in this? You know, I don't know. God's given it to me. I don't know what to do with it. But I mean, no, we have an obligation to lean into it, to actually live it out. All of the gifts are intended to be practiced when the context of the local church, the community of faith. You can't discover your spiritual gifts apart from community. You can't do this on your own. He goes on to say, do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Then do it with the, get this, the strength and energy that God provides. God's going to give you the strength and energy to do what he's created you to do, what he's uniquely gifted you to do. God, he'll never just leave you empty-handed with what he's given you. But you can only discover your spiritual gifts, not just within community, but by practice, by practice actually doing it, doing what the Holy Spirit is leading you to do, not leaving it for someone else in the church to do 
or someone else who you feel like has the, a stronger evidence of that gift than you do. Understand this, City Line Church, we, we wanna help you. We wanna be the kind of church that helps you identify and utilize your gifts, your unique gifts. Because we don't want you sit around, just to sit around doing nothing. We don't want you to just sit around taking up space. That's not what God has created us for. The better that you understand the Holy Spirit and how he has gifted you, you don't have to sit around and ask yourself, well, I wonder how the, the church is gonna use my gift. No, you, when you understand your gifting, you understand the power of the Holy Spirit inside of you, you begin to look around and say, hey, where does my gift make sense? Hey, where can I come? You begin to assess the needs and you begin to take action based on what God is doing in your life. And listen, this is what happens. This is what happens when we do that. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory, power to him forever and ever. That our gifts begin to highlight Jesus Christ. City Line exists to help you discover and follow Jesus if you don't get anything else out of this, know that God's created you with purpose, that th you were made for this. <laughs> that gift that he's given you, you were made for that gift. So to give you some tools to grow, I wanna remind you that we announce certain things to help you. One of those things that we often announce is, is just simply this. Maybe, maybe your next step today is coming to the welcome to church party. <laughs> welcome to City Line party, just to start that, to get grounded in a local church, to be able to call your church home, to be able to say, hey, you know what? This is this, I, I'm ready to do that. I'm gonna step into all that God has for me. Maybe you do need to take a spiritual gifts assessment online and familiarize yourself more with the spiritual gifts. There's a bunch of them, a lot of them, right? Take that test and just see, God, do I see evidence of that in my life? Begin to pray, God, show me those things. Maybe, maybe you show up at the Holy Spirit Q&A <laughs> and ask all those burning questions you've been writing down that you feel like we didn't have time to cover on the weekend. Or maybe you do this, you show up at team night on November 12th, and you say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna embrace my gifts, and I'm gonna jump on a serve team, and I'm gonna make a difference in my community. I'm gonna make a difference in this church. I'm gonna make a difference in this world. It's always somebody's first Sunday. Did you know that? God's entrusting us with new people all the time. It's always somebody's first Sunday, which means it's another opportunity for you to fully function how you are uniquely gifted. Why? So they come to know Jesus just like you did. Would you take that next step today? Let's pray. God, thank you. Thank you for your love for us, God. Thank you, Lord, for your desire for us to become all that you've created us to be. God, you've uniquely gifted us, Jesus, in so many incredible ways. And God, I pray that as we go on a, 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 the road of discovery, trying to discover what these are, and we begin praying and seeking, God, I pray that you would reveal them and that we would not be afraid of them, that we would not think that they are weird, but God, that we would fully embrace them and step into them and begin to utilize them. God, work in our hearts today. Lord, give us the boldness and the courage to take the next right step, Lord, into what you're calling us to. And Jesus, we give you all glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Why don't you stand with us and let's worship together as we sing this last song.